welcome to the science lab again. This is my space, but the good thing about everything that we're going to try today, you can try at home yourselves and be sound people. It's actual sound people. We're going to talk about sound today. I am Phil and I am going to make beautiful music with all of you, four of you with machines, instruments. The sounds that we're going to make today are all about vibrations and shakes. And that's exactly what sound is. It is a vibration. And it is how sound air vibrates is what creates the things that you hear. So what we're actually going to do today is we're going to make our very own musical instrument and it's called a membranophone. And a membrane is something that is in between two surfaces or it's something that vibrates. So we're going to create one ourselves. It's going to end up looking something like this. So this is a bottle that we've took, taken and cleaned from the bin. I'm wearing my David Attenborough plastic. We've got to recycle t-shirts and stuff around here. I have some old uh, gloves from my, um, when I'm tanning <laughs> and myself. And when I have some paper straws that I'm going to, I've used, I have a, an old balloon as well in cases and other bits and pieces like elastic. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a one of the bottles, about 500 milliliter, it was a half a liter of, uh, of um, like soda or whatever else you want, and you kind of cut the top off it so you're left with this kind of a shape. Now you might need help with that, and be careful because the edges of this can be a little bit sharp. So maybe get some help if you need to do with that. We are then gonna get one of these, which is a hole punch. So it's for putting holes in paper. And we're gonna try and slide this in as far as we can get it so that we can punch a hole in this. So I'm gonna do that now. And, okay, a little bit rough and ready, but we have a hole in it. Don't worry if it's a little bit jagged, we can use that again later on. So we're gonna take our glove, which is made from rubber, and this is what's gonna be our membrane, what's actually going to uh, vibrate. And so we're gonna take our scissors again, ask for help if you need it. So you're gonna cut the fingers off, not your own, because that'd be not cool. So you're gonna cut these out and you're gonna be left with a nice sheet. And because the glove has two sides, once you cut it, you can only need to use half it, so you can give the other to the other person in your house to make even more of these instruments, which again will sound amazing. So now we have a, a sheet like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drape it over the top of what you've cut out that way. Uh, make sure that it's, it's big enough that it can go over the edges. So flatten it out that size. You want it to be nice and kind of taut, which means kind of tight around it. We're going to get an elastic band and we're going to put it over on top of this. Now, and you want it to be that the elastic band is higher up than the hole that you made with the hole punch. Okay, perfect. So what you're left with now is you have your glove on top of the bottle top and it's like that. So it's like a little drum. And you have the hole here as well that you can get easy access to. It's now covered by the elastic band, so you have that. So we've got my uh, fabulous piece of card here, which is a unicorn card, uh, an amazing rainbow here, Spectrum. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll this into a tube. Now, it's easier to roll it against a table than it is against in midair, so you want to get it nice and tight because it has to go into the neck of the bottle. Now, also what you want to look at is the length of this because this is going to be important. So if I take this and I have it, and it might unravel a little bit, but you're going to take it and you're going to put it inside the neck of the bottle and then you're going to push it up right up against the top. You see a pot, pop there of the membrane, which is what we're creating here, a membrane phone up there. So now we have this, which is starting to kind of look like an instrument, like something that you might do to do, which is a do to do tube, or uh, blow into. So it's starting to look more like a, an instrument. We're going to take one of our paper straws, and then we're going to find the hole that we made with the punch earlier on, and we're going to push this straw inside it, up against here. As you blow through this, the sound will travel through the air and cause this to, to vibrate. And, and sound needs a medium to be, or something to travel through in order to be heard. Like in space, there's a vacuum, there's no air. No one can hear you scream, shout, or be delighted of being on the International Space Station. Air takes sound at about 340 meters a second. And in water, it travels about four times as fast. So depending on what sound is traveling through determines the speed, but also how you hear things. So when we blow this, you're going through air, it sounds a little bit like that, but it'll sound different in this because of the length of the tube. So it's also what air is traveling through, but the length, Skelly, I'm just going to, you, he has one too. So because this is shorter again, little sound different. And if I do the three of them together, oh, hold on. 
And this, um, you can try this with all your family. And also, I have even another one that you can make this even simpler with a toilet roll and a balloon that we had left over from one of Skelly's many birthday parties. He's about 180 at this stage. This vibration will make a sound which will be beautiful again. You're going to really love this. It sounds like a ship's coming into port. And actually, even we made a bigger one, even with Skelly. You ready to try this? <laughs> it's all out because it's long. Like it's this the amount of vibrations and the times that this can bounce off each other, create resonance, which is sound bouncing around against each other. So you can try all of this, make beautiful music, and even I'd recommend that you try this stuff like together as a family or with your friends late at night, usually about midnight. I mean, your neighbors will love it, and even sound recorders love it too. <laughs> 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 See you next time. <laughs> Hello, I'm Phil, and welcome to MySpace, because MySpace is anywhere that I'm doing science, and it's the same with you. Just go out, explore the world, and be supervised. I know my T-shirt says that today I'm unsupervised, but that's because I want to show you something quite interesting and a little bit explosive, but we'll get to that in a moment. The first thing I want to do today is to talk to you about buoyancy, and I don't mean just about being in a buoyant kind of mood. A boing, boing, as in bouncing, boing kind of mood, but buoyancy as in how you float. So there's a thing called Archimedes' principle, which says that the amount of water that you displace, i.e. the amount of water that you push away because of the size of you, is equal to the amount of the force that you feel pushed up against you from the water. We did it before in one of the experiments. It's why you float. So if you have something that it sinks naturally, and then you add some other stuff to it, like bubbles, or you have a bag or a lifting thing, or you make that space, the amount of water that it pushes away bigger, it's gonna lift up. And this is a lovely little experiment that you can do yourself at home to, to demonstrate that. And that is the reason today that I have some raisins. The raisin that I have raisins today. Raisin that I have raisins? Raisins today that I have them. Uh, all right, right, the raisin for this, reason for this. It's not so that I can have a snack midway through. Oh, they are delicious. You should not always eat your size experiments. You should be careful. But because we can use them in the experiment. Nope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Choice. So, raisins are a little bit wrinkly. You know, like wrinkles, like folds, like you see on skin. Not on me because I'm so youthful. But maybe on your mom and dad. Maybe look at their wrinkles now and just point them out to them. That'd be really kind of just so you can see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about raisins and wrinkles. You'll see that there's kind of folds in them. They're kind of wrinkly. And that's exactly where the carbon dioxide that's in this sparkling water can attach, put bubbles on it, and start it to float and lift the raisins up that would normally sink. So if I take this, and what you should be able to see when I open this up, is you'll see bubbles. Bubbles. And then I'm going to add it to this glass. And what's going to happen is when I add it to this glass here, you'll see some of the bubbles coming out. So the carbon dioxide is coming out of solution, which is the solution is the water here. And I am going to add some raisins. The raisins normally sink. So when I add them into this, you'll see, oh, you'll see that they start moving up and down. And what's happening is the carbon dioxide is attaching to these little nucleation sites, the, the wrinkly bits, they're called nucleation sites, where carbon dioxide can gather. And what causes it happen is that it rises up. You see this one now? Look, he's trying to try it, rising up. Hey, it stays up and sinks back down. So the bubbles act and change the buoyancy. They make it from negatively buoyant to neutrally buoyant to positively buoyant, burst back down negatively and they sink again. This is lovely, it's something that you could try yourself at home, it's really, really nice, but it's not that dramatic. And on the After School Hub, we like to do things a little bit more dramatically, so let's try something a little bit more dramatic. So those little creases or whatever are called nucleation sites. And that sounds a little bit complicated, but basically what they are is little dips and crevices. So this golf ball, you might have seen one before, has lots of dimples on it or little spots or little kind of what you'd call, I suppose, holes in them nearly or dips. And what they're designed to do is to help it fly. But the thing that I'm going to use to to demonstrate this a little bit more dramatically has millions of these little holes, little nucleation sites, where lots of carbon dioxide can gather and then be released. Uh, it's going to be one of these, these little mints. So these little mints, it has a smiley face on it. This has millions of little, little tiny holes. If you were to get a microscope and look in at it, you'd see millions of little holes. So I'm going to put it into this stuff. 
which is a cola, and it has lots and lots of carbon dioxide inside pressed into it. But because these little sweets, the ones with all the tiny holes, has millions of little holes, all of the carbon dioxide can come out much, much quicker, much, much faster. So I'm just going to put that there. So what I'm going to try and do is I have a little device which is going to allow these to be inserted into this pretty quick, and we're going to see what's going to happen. Now, at the top of these, one has three little holes, this one has kind of a, a hole into a point, so maybe make a prediction about what way you think the, the, the coal is going to come out. So I'm going to open this gently, so I don't let most of the carbon dioxide out, which is pressurised inside. Don't go, OK, that's a good start. I'm going to do the same on this one, nice and easy. Here we go, perfect. OK, so now I'm going to attach these. So if I tell... Oh, my glasses nearly fell off there, but I had a... See how... See how so... No! I pressed it too quick! No! Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen! So, no! no! OK, that... That went... That went quicker than I wanted it to do, because it popped out. And um, I'm going to put my safety goggles on now. Because um, safety first, and that went perfectly. I mean, yes. And I will do the other one. Um, yes, so go on to rte.ie forward slash learn. I pulled out the cable early by mistake, but I'm going to do this one in time. Um, yeah, log on, see what happens and try it yourself. I mean, what could go wrong? Perfect. There we go. I mean, no, camera, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. That oh, went well. But I mean, this is what happened when I'm left unsupervised. Maybe if you try this outside, um, Send it into Orty, Orty.ie forward slash learn. Get in touch and uh, yeah, get, have some fun. Get, clean up. Yeah, someone dial three, four, help. Science, what you know about science? Tell me what you know about science. Science, what you know about science? Tell me what you know about science. Science can help us find the cure. Ha <laughs> ha 